part eight, configuring Jenkins for instance initialization script. Now you don't really have to understand this script. It's just a Unix shell script. It's specific to our configuration and our application that we're going to be testing. But as long as you understand why it's there, that's the important part. You just need to copy the following into the init script field. The init script. So once Jenkins has told AWS to start the Unix instance, and once the instance is running and you've logged in for the first time, then Jenkins can run this initialization script. And we generally use this to update the software and packages on the server and maybe install any other dependencies that we're going to need to build, install, and run our, our application under test. So if you copy in the init script from the notes, all this init script does is update Java, make sure it's installed, and update a couple of other packages on there that are dependencies for our project. Now bear in mind this is a demo init script for our course. When you build, install, test your software, you will have different init scripts. And this is something you'll need to discuss with the development team, the build team, and configure specifically for your setup. And that's it. There's nothing in the advanced area. We just need to save and apply those changes. And that is the configuration that will allow us to start up and instance automatically in our AWS account. So with all of that configured, if we return back to our Jenkins homepage, and on the drop down for the build executor status, and if we click on the build executor status link, it'll take us to the nodes that we have configured. And the first one in there, the running node, is our Windows machine that's running the main Jenkins server. But we're now in a position to provision our Rocket Chat server, which is the server we've just configured. And when we click on this link, it will create an instance in our Amazon AWS account using this AMI that we configured. So the confirmation we get from Jenkins tells us that the node is being launched and that it, this node has a specific Jenkins ID and a particular label, which we'll talk about in a minute. At the moment, there's no projects or builds or jobs tied to this server. We're just running this particular server up. And if we click on see log for more details, we'll see all of the information about Jenkins running up this AWS instance. And if you go to your Amazon account and look at your running instances, you should see that this instance is automatically being provisioned by, by Jenkins. So we can see in there I've got an instance that's been initialized and that's using our default and Unix security roles, it's used the AMI we defined, and any second now that instance should be complete. Coming back to the log file for the execution of this instance, we'll see that the init script is now being executed, so this is where we're updating and installing any additional software or packages on our Linux server. So finally at the completion of that instance creation and the updates using the init script, we should see something in our log file that says that the slave successfully connected and online. If we return back to our Jenkins dashboard now, we should see in the build executor status panel that we've got a node that's run up and is in an idle state. And if we click on the drop down menu for that node, we have a number of options here. We can either delete that slave machine completely, we could change some of the configuration, we can look at the build history, some stats, the script console again, the log file. In the next session we'll talk about a few other points regarding our Jenkins slave machines.